Retina Rounds, episode number 135. 360 degree prophylactic laser retinopexy. Retinal detachment is a feared complication following pars plane of vitrectomy. Whether a redetachment following primary retinal detachment repair or a new retinal detachment following vitrectomy for other indications, 360 degree prophylactic peripheral laser has been proposed as a technique to decrease the risk of postoperative retinal detachment. The patient in today's video, presented by guest surgeon of the week, Dr. Michael Klufus, is undergoing a vitrectomy for an epiretinal membrane and symptomatic floaters. Of note, the patient has previously undergone laser barricade of a localized peripheral retinal detachment. To prevent a postoperative retinal detachment, Dr. Klufus and his fellow at the time, Dr. Lynette Rodriguez, performed prophylactic 360 degree laser retinopexy. Let's see how the case goes, and at the end, we'll review some of the literature on the topic. Thank you, Dr. Klufus, for sharing this case. Okay, you can see that this is a 25 gauge pars plane of vitrectomy, and this patient has a multifocal lens. And it's not uncommon for patients who have multifocal lenses to complain of symptomatic vitreous floaters. So at this point in the case, uh, Dr. Klufus, as well as his fellow at the time, Dr. Rodriguez, are performing a core vitrectomy to remove those symptomatic floaters and are performing a limited peripheral shave at this point without any scleral depression. Now some ICG as well as some triamcinolone are instilled over the posterior pole and using a high magnification contact lens, uh, you can see this epiretinal membrane that's very nicely being peeled uh, from the macular surface. So uh, you can see that that, uh, that uh, ERM has been peeled at first over the nasal macula and now uh, the peel is being extended over the temporal macula. Here's some additional ICG is being uh, used to stain the residual ILM. Uh, and to uh, better see the edge of the, ep of the epiretinal membrane. And now that epiretinal membrane uh, peeling has been completed. That's a very nice and efficient, uh, very nice and efficient peel. Now some additional peeling that's being performed uh, to extend that over the temporal macula. So now uh, Dr. Klufus and his fellow are going to go ahead and perform a peripheral uh, shave. And you can see that scleral depression is being used here to trim the vitreous back. And this is a step that can help to decrease the risk for postoperative uh, retinal breaks, uh, since vitreous uh, contraction, particularly uh, at the vitreous base, may cause a new retinal break. So Dr. Klufus and his fellow are gonna go ahead and shave that peripheral vitreous. And now they're tackling this area of uh, peripheral uh, retinal detachment that was, previously, um, that was previously lasered. So now, uh, now this is really the, the main topic of today's video, which is, performing this 360 degree uh, peripheral prophylactic laser barricade. And you can see that that's, that laser is being done uh, all the way around 360 degrees uh, and uh, is being done about two to three uh, rows of confluent laser. Uh, now uh, the, uh, the, some subretinal fluid is being drained at the site of the retinal break, which caused that localized peripheral retinal detachment. Uh, an air fluid exchange is being performed to try to remove as much fluid as possible. Here, it's only necessary to remove enough fluid so that the retina um, is opposed to the underlying RPE at the site of the retinal break. You can see there is some residual subretinal fluid that's between the retinal break and the previously performed laser, and that's fine. That, that fluid will go away in the postoperative period. Now, complete air fluid exchange is performed, and uh, some C3F8 gas is being used as a tamponade agent. Um, some antibiotic is being injected at the end of the case. So here are some discussion points. You know, the argument in favor of performing 360 degree prophylactic laser retinopexy is that it can prevent a postoperative retinal detachment either from unidentified retinal breaks during the surgery or postoperative retinal breaks from contraction of the residual vitreous proximal to the vitreous base. Now, the counter argument against performing prophylactic laser is that it isn't entirely clear that this is a necessary step. It certainly adds some time to the surgery, potentially cost if otherwise a, a laser probe wouldn't be open for the surgery. And 360 degree laser may increase inflammation, thereby uh, causing CME or ERM formation, although that point is debatable. Uh, it can exacerbate proliferative vitreoretinopathy retinopathy in patients who are undergoing vitrectomy uh, for retinal detachment. Uh, laser at the three o'clock and nine o'clock uh, clock hour positions may damage the ciliary nerves and that can cause loss of accommodation, medriasis, and neurotrophic keratopathy. And then, and last, intense photocoagulation may actually create retinal breaks. So what does the literature say about this topic? Now, 
This isn't a comprehensive review of the literature, but I have chosen a few papers to guide our discussion. And this study published in Retina in 2007 from Hyung Ko and Bill Freeman and co-authors, prophylactic laser was performed for patients undergoing 20 gauge parse plane vitrectomy for macular disease. And they showed uh, that this prophylactic laser decreased the incidence of postoperative retinal detachment from 13.3% to 3.5%. In this study by uh, Takeshi Iwase and colleagues, prophylactic 360 degree laser was performed in patients undergoing, again, 20 gauge phaco vitrectomy for either a macular hole or retinal detachment. And while there wasn't any protective effect shown in the retinal detachment cohort, 360-degree prophylactic laser did decrease the incidence of postoperative retinal deta detachment in the macular hole cohort from 5.7% to 0% at the 12-month postoperative period. What about cases with small gauge surgery? Well, this study by Akriti Garg, Stanley Chang, and co-authors published in Retina in 2018 looked at prophylactic 360-degree laser performed preoperatively in patients who were undergoing vitrectomy for an ERM or macular hole and they found that this procedure did not decrease the rate of postoperative breaks or retinal detachment. Now, how about patients who are undergoing vitrectomy for retinal detachment? Well, in two large retrospective studies, the Manchester Pseudophagic Retinal Detachment Study and the Primary Retinal Detachment Outcome Study, 360-degree prophylactic laser did not improve the single surgery anatomic success rate and, in fact, was associated possibly with worse visual outcomes. And last, what about eyes with silicone oil? Well, this paper from Alistair Laidlaw, Zdenek Greger, and colleagues showed that prophylactic laser decreased the incidence of retinal detachment after silicone oil removal from 26% to 14%. There are, of course, many more papers on the topic, and I'd recommend the Retina Rounds community to take a look at these papers and others. So how do we put all of this information together? Well, in the era of small gauge surgery, it's not entirely clear that prophylactic 360 laser is necessary to prevent a retinal detachment. So what can we do to minimize postoperative retinal detachments? Well, some best practices include performing a thorough vitrectomy. And while some surgeons don't routinely shave the vitreous base, I feel that peripheral shaving sometimes with the assistance of scleral depression, as was shown in Dr. Klufus's case, can decrease the risk of postoperative retinal breaks. Now, even if peripheral shaving is not performed, it's a good idea to routinely perform a scleral depressed exam under wide field visualization to check for any peripheral retinal breaks or other pathology that may need to be treated with laser. Now, peripheral retinal breaks should be lasered, and one can also consider lasering at risk lesions like lat lattice degeneration and vitroretinal tufts. And while there's conflicting evidence as to whether or not routine 360 prophylactic laser is a benefit, I think it's reasonable to consider it in patients prior to silicone oil removal and possibly in other high-risk eyes like those with giant retinal tears. Now, when performing peripheral laser, one should aim for about two to three uh, rows of near-confluent laser of medium-intensity gray-white burns, and that laser should be applied ideally uh, at the posterior margin uh, of the vitreous base, although some consider also extending that laser up to the aura serrata. You should also consider sparing the three o'clock and nine o'clock clock hour positions when performing 360 laser. Now to the Retina Rounds community, please let us know your thoughts on this topic in the comments section. And thank you again, Dr. Klufus, for sharing this case and for giving us all an opportunity to learn more about the role of 360 degree prophylactic laser. If you enjoyed this video, please visit us at retinarounds.com. There you can sign up for our email list. You'll get a notification every time a new video is posted. And if you have an interesting video or a tip or trick that you'd like to share, please follow the links on our website and you can upload your video there. Thanks so much for watching.